All right, here we go. We're going to do some more factoring. So uh, hopefully you're pros now at factoring these trinomials. Check these two out here. So we got these two trinomials here. I got this one over here, and I got this guy over here. What's the difference about these? What is different? This is what we were doing last section here. What's different about this one? Maybe you can notice quickly. Oh, there it is. There is a, now a coefficient in front of the x squared. There's a leading term here. Or I'm sorry, leading coefficient changes everything. Total game changer. So this one over here, easy peasy. Hopefully you've done so many, you can kind of do them in your head. Hey, what multiplies to negative 12, adds negative 4. Done. Done and done. This one's going to be more work. We have a few more steps here, but bear with me and you'll get these. If you try to guess and check this one, you could. You could try to come over here and fill these parentheses. Okay, how am I going to make this work? I got it. The difference here is this was x and x. Well, now I got this 2, so one of these is going to have to be a 2. Then you're going to have to try to figure out, oh, man, I got to end up with something that multiplies to 5, this middle term here. So let me give you a few pointers here. You can play the guess and check game. That's totally cool. I got no problem with that. Um, I'm going to show you the way that just does it for you, that procedure will get you the answer. So you have it. Basically, here's the trick. It turns out that you need to know, it's the same as like last time, like what multiplies to 12. And we were actually doing this, but we're going to say, in this case, what multiplies to negative 10. We're going to take the last term times the first term, so the 5 times the 2. You were actually doing that before, but the leading term was 1 here. So you were saying what multiplies to 12. You were actually doing 12 times 1, but there's no need to say that because 12 times 1 is 12. So when there's a leading number here, yeah, we got to say, okay, now what is that? So now what multiplies to negative 10 adds or subtracts to negative 9. So it's the same kind of idea that we were doing. And so what is that? Well, I think it's 1 and 10. It's either 1 and 10 or 2 and 5. So it's got to be 1 and 10. Uh, who's the negative here? To make this all negative, it's got to be negative 10 there. So what we're going to do here to kind of make this all pan out is we're going to rewrite this uh, trinomial. So it's 2x squared. But instead of writing 9x, the reason I came up with these factors here, what am I doing? Well, 1 plus negative 10 is at negative 9. So we're going to say plus 1x minus 10x and then bring down that minus 5. So check out what we did here. We really wrote, I just can't talk, rewrote negative 9x as 1x minus 10x. It's the same thing. Negative 9x is 1x minus 10x. So why are we doing that? Well, we're going to do a thing called factor by grouping. So I'm going to look at in the grouping of these, these terms here to come up with the answer. And this really can solve a lot of different things. Later on, we get more terms in there. Uh, so let's take a look at the first group. So what I do is I kind of take my hand here and cover this up. Okay, there we go. So here's my hand right here. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to cover up the last two parts of that. So I'm going to cover that up. Uh, what you're probably thinking now is like, wow, that's a that's kind of like a baby hand, Mr. Brust. I'm like, yeah, yeah, little hands. Uh, <laughs> that's kind of weird, but it's perfect for covering this up. So here we go. I'm going to cover up that side, and I'm going to look at just this side of it. So sometimes I even draw like a little dotted line here. I'm only looking at the first two terms in the group. So what do they have in common? This goes back to pulling out the greatest common factor. What comes out of this? Well, they both have an x, so I can take the x out, and I'm left with what? 2x plus 1. So I undistributed the first part. Then I take the little baby hand, bring it over here, cover up that side of it, and now look at just the, this side of the, uh, of the grouping. So I grouped the last two terms, negative 10x minus 5. What do they have in common? Well, they definitely have a negative, not negative 10. Oops, how about negative 5? 5 divides both these. If the leading term is negative, I always take a negative out. And what's left when I divide these by negative 5? Well, 10 divided by 5 is that 2x. And then 5 divided by negative 5 is plus 1. So I can get rid of little baby hand here, Gandhi. And you can see I took the first two terms, grouped them together, and factored out something. Took the last two terms and factored out something. Got this. What I love about this method, this factoring by grouping, is you know you're right if this is the same as this. This will always happen. That means you're right. So if it doesn't happen, try it again. Start over. So this is great. So I know I'm going to get it right. What is this last step? Well, this part's the kind of weird part. Basically, you are saying both of this whole thing here, they, they have a term in common. They have a 2x plus 1 in common. So what do they have in common? They have 2x plus 1. You're factoring that out, and what's left? Well, it's, it's this x minus 5. So you took 2x plus 1 away from the x. You took 2x plus 1 out of the negative 5, and that's this term. It's got to be in parentheses. And this is it. This is the answer right here. Isn't that cool? So basically what happened, we just unmultiplied this thing. If I want to double check it real quick, which I probably should, is multiply it out. That's 2x squared minus 10x plus that 1x, and those may look familiar, minus that 5. 
and then go ahead and multiply that, 2x squared minus 9x minus 5. Check, it works, and you should know it works back here. That'll match up and you're good to go. That is it, so now all of a sudden we can do some pretty challenging stuff. Let's do a couple more of these together because uh, it, it is a lot of steps, but bear with me. Once you do a couple, it's great. You'll be good at these. You'll like them. Uh, so again, here we go. Last times first. So we're going to take the last one times the first one, and we're looking for things that multiply to negative 24, add or subtract to 10, and help me out here. What am I going to get here? Um, I'm going to either get 6 and 4 or 8 and 3. Not 8 and 3, that doesn't work. So again, if you want to list them, and maybe you need to, 24, 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, or 6 times 4. So this is that weird one. I think this came up last time too, uh, where in this case I actually have to use the 2 and 12 because of the signs. So if I use 2 and 12, one of these bad boys got to be negative to give me negative 24. It's got to be the 2 because negative 2 plus 12 is positive 10. So if you got to write all that out, that's cool, totally cool. Now we're rewriting it, so I'm just going to rewrite it as 3x squared. Instead of saying 10x, I'm going to say, order doesn't matter here. You can go plus 12x, minus 2x, it doesn't really matter, uh, minus 8. But the key is, what did I do? I took this 10x and rewrote as 12x minus 2x. It's still 10x. It's still the same thing. And why do I do that? Well, I'm going to do it so I can do factor by grouping. Basically, you take the first two terms, draw a little dotted line, or take your hand and cover it up. If you like that hand, you can just cover up that second, those last two terms. You don't need them. And I'm just looking at the first two terms. What do these guys have in common? Well, I see a 3 and a 12, so there I'm going to take a 3. They both have an x, and the first two will always have an x. And then what's left in there? You're going to be left with x plus 4. Awesome. Then slide over baby hand over here. And now what do we got to do here? We're going to say because it's negative, I take out a negative. It looks like a 2 divides both of these. And when I divide those, I'm going to get x, negative 8, divided by negative 2, positive 4. So I'm good to go on that. Let's get rid of this bad boy here. And I've got my grouping. Did I do it right? Yes. x plus 4, x plus 4. So I can look and say I'm going to factor that out. And again, the order doesn't matter. You are left with 3x minus 2 is the chunk on the outside. And you're left with x plus 4. That's a crazy looking x plus 4 on there. There it is. If you check it real quick, which I'm going to make you do a little bit on the practice, uh, you'll get the same thing. Super cool, super cool. You want to do one more together? Okay, so we're going to do last times first. What multiplies to negative 20? Hey, negative 24 again. There it is again. And adds or subtracts to negative 5. So I'm guessing my factors are a little bit different this time. So I got them over here. Uh, what multiplies? I'm thinking it's going to be 8 and 3. And who's the negative here? It's got to be the negative 8 in this case. So we got the negative 8. Then I'm going to rewrite it. So 6x squared minus 8x. Then I'm going to say plus 3x minus 4. So again, negative 5, just to make sure I'm cool, got rewritten as negative 8x plus 3x. I'm going to split this into groups. So I like the first two groups, or the first two terms and the last two terms. I'm going to cover up the back. I don't even care about it. And what can I factor out of this? Well, 6 and 8, what do they have in common? I can take a 2 out. They're definitely going to be always be an x. And I'm left with what? 6 divided by 2, 3x, and then 8 divided by 2 is 4. Slide baby hand over. Look at the last two in that group. And what's going on here? Weird one, but this happens quite a bit. What number divides 3 and 4? Nothing does. So what are you pulling out? You're pulling out just a 1. That's it. 1 is the only thing that mo that you can factor out of that. 1 divides everything. And what's left? Well, you're left with just that. So don't freak out if that happens. It's just a plus 1. If it would have been minus there, you can go ahead and pull the minus out. But it's plus 1. So that's going to happen. Um, and am I right? Sure, there it is. 3x minus 4, 3x minus 4. I know I'm golden. So I like to say, boom, 2x plus 1 is the first term, the things in front. And then keep the other one, 3x minus 4. I am good to go right there. We are cruising, cruising. I know it's a lot of steps. Don't freak out, especially don't freak out if we say this. Hey, can I do it for solving equations? That's, that's a, lot, a lot of why factoring is so great is now I can solve these things. So sure, it's the same steps. We're going to add one more thing and actually get an equal sign. So let's do this bad boy together, see how it goes. So I'm looking for things that what? Multiply to 30. Add or subtract to negative 17. If you want to list all the factors of 30, you're more than welcome. So 
1 times 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't go in there, 5 goes in there 6 times, and then I start to repeat 6, I already got there. So of these, do any of them give me 17? It looks like this set right here, 2 and 15. And then to make the signs work, if this is positive, these signs have to be the same. So in this case, they're both negative. Negative times negative is positive, and they give me that. So we're going to rewrite this thing as 3x squared minus 2x minus 15x plus 10 equals 0. So again, totally the same thing. Negative 17 is that. So I haven't broken any rules. Not illegal. Uh, I'm going to group these. Do I need baby hand? Let's try one without baby hand. Uh, so look at the first two terms here. And I'm going to pull out all they have in common is an x. And what's left in there? Well, if I take the x out, I'm left with 3x minus 2. And then come over here, 15 and 10, I can take out a 5. And because it's negative, you always take out a negative here. Got to bring that negative. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. 10 divided by negative 5 is negative 2. And this still equals 0. And I know I'm right here. These match. Awesome. So let's just finish it out. It's going to be x minus 5 times 3x minus 2 equals 0. And because we're solving it now, we're actually going to solve this bad boy. So zero product property it says, hey, if this side's 0, or if you, times, if you made this 0, 0 times 0 is 0, solve these things. You're going to get x equals 5. Solve this side. Let's do it real quick. Add your 2. And then what is that? Divide your 3. So you get x equals 2 thirds. So in this case, if you solve this, x equals 2 thirds or x equals 5. Two solutions in this. Boom. They both work. Fantastic. So uh, one more of these. I'm just going to get you started. Uh, again, we got to set these equal to 0. So it's got to equal 0 for this to work. So And we want this x squared term or whatever to be positive. So don't bring the 8x squared over here. That'll make a negative. That'll be a hot mess. So we want it to be positive. So we got to subtract 3 from both sides. So we're really looking at this right here. Why don't you see if you can factor this one? Pause it. Try to factor it all on yourself, all by yourself. Follow the steps, and then see if you can solve it. Good luck. All right, so here is all the work. So hopefully you said uh, your two factors should have been 6 and negative 4. Depending on how you wrote it, I wrote plus 6, minus 4. Totally could have wrote it the other way. It doesn't matter as long as you end up with this. 2x minus 1, 4x plus 3. The order doesn't matter uh, as long as you got to here. And then when you solve them, you get 1 half and negative 3 fourths. Those are your two solutions for this that would solve it. Uh, hopefully that panned out for you in that one. Awesome. So let's just take a look at those special cases again, and then uh, we'll wrap this bad boy up here. So remember, difference of squares for last time. That's when that middle term was 0. Uh, hopefully you got pretty good say, oh, yeah, because of the minus and because of the 25, I just know this breaks down into x plus 5, x minus 5. So I don't have to overthink it. Boom, it just works out. What's that going to look like with a leading coefficient with a number up front? You could definitely do the last times of first and, and all that fun stuff, but you're going to get really, really big numbers. If by chance, and by chance is going to happen because I'm going to make these problems up and put them into practice, uh, so you're going to see these. Uh, if it works out that they're both perfect squares, you can do it because this is 3 times 3. This is 5 times 5. So what's the difference here? This is going to be 3x plus 5. This is going to be 3x minus 5. Check it out. Done and done. If you don't believe me, you can multiply it real quick. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. You got minus 15x plus 15x minus 25. But what's going to happen? Middle terms cancel. So if I double distribute, it works. So this actually was the same thing. It just had a lean coefficient of 1. What's the square root of 1? It is 1. So we didn't even think about it. Uh, but now we're going to have to think about it. So if they are both perfect squares, remember those perfect squares? 1 times 1, 2 times 2. 3 times 3, 4 times 4. These are the ones we got to know. Boom. And you can keep these going 8 times 8 all the way up. Basically, you probably want to get above 100 for these. Awesome. So if I had a, a line up here and I had to identify these, which ones are different squares? This first one, well, 4 is 2 times 2. This is 3 times 3. I got subtraction in the middle. Yeah, that one works. This is 2x plus 3, 2x minus 3. Super cool. This one looks good. 7 times 7, 6 times 6. What's the problem here? Oh, no, plus sign. That is not difference. There's no difference. That's a sum. Not going to work. How about this one? 2 times 2 is 4. 1 times 1 is 1. And it's a negative. I'm good to go. This is 2x plus 1. 2x minus 1. Super cool. This looks pretty good. 4 times 4. 3 times 3. I got a negative. Oh, wait a minute. I have got an extra x here. That's a problem. This doesn't work. 
only thing you could do in this case, you could actually factor out an x, but that is not a difference of square. That goes back to the first section, uh, old school, greatest common factor stuff. That is difference of squares. So can you put it all together? What I want you to do is try all of these. Remember, if you're factoring, you're just unmultiplying. If you're solving, you're going to tell me x equals. So never tell me it equals something unless there's an equal sign in it. So try these four. See how you do. Good luck. All right, here we go. So in the first one, it was just a factor. Make sure I got 5x minus 1 times x plus 2. You can check out my factors and how I rewrote it up there. Hopefully your signs were cool in that one. Second one, maybe it should give you more room. This one took me a while. So you got to subtract 1 from both sides and make it equal 0. Then you got to do your factor by grouping. I end up getting down to this, 2x plus 1 times 3x minus 1. So hopefully you got to there. Solve it. I put the answer up here. X, I'm sorry, x equals negative 1 half and a third. Hopefully you got that one. That was the hardest one I felt like. Number three, did you recognize difference of squares here? 2 times 2 is 4. 5 times 5 is 25. So it breaks down to this. And then number four, old school, greatest common factor. What do they have in common? A 4x. You can pull a 4x out. So it goes back to the first section there. Try to uh, keep it real there with that. Excellent. So I know it's a lot of steps. I know I threw a lot at you right there, but you just got to practice them. You should be good to go. Uh, factor by grouping. Good luck on the mesh check. Peace out.